Hello all, welcome to IQ Pop. In this video, I am going to discuss the most important topic in DBMS that is functional dependencies. So what is functional dependency? Functional dependencies are nothing but constraints that are derived from meaning and interrelationship of the attributes. That means you have a relation with a set of attributes. Now you have to understand how these attributes are interrelated or what are the relation among them. If you can understand, then definitely you will be able to develop or create the functional dependencies. It is represented in this form x to y such that the sum tuple t1 of x equal to t2 of x. That means if there is two tuple t1 and t2 which are having same value of x, then t1 and t2 must have same value of y. Now, look at this example. We have a student table and here we are having student ID name, email ID and date of birth and department ID are the attribute in the table. Now we can have a dependency or FD, functional dependency, student ID to name. That means name can be identified by student ID, right? So here we call <coughs> name as dependent, okay? Name is dependent on student ID. Another example, if you look at, that is a department table, we have department ID, department name, email and address are the attributes. So we may have a FD like department ID to department name, comma, department email. That means department name and department email can be identified or are dependent on department ID. Another example, you can see student course table. So here we have student ID, course code and grade as attributes. So we may have a functional dependency like student ID, course code together can identify grade. So this is another example, right? Now examples of constraints. An FD is a constraint must be true for each tuple, right? In every relation instance. At any instance of the relation, the FD must hold true for each and every tuple or rows in the table. Now, if K is a key of R, then if that means primary key, it refers to primary key, right? K is an attribute which is primary key or uh, it may be set up attribute which is primary key of R, then A must able to identify A. A is set of all attributes in R. Now, closure. What is closure? Say we have a relation R with attributes X, Y, Z, M, N, O. Now, we may have a set of functional dependencies represented by F. So, X to Y, X to Z, Z M to N, Z M to O, Y to N. So, these are different functional dependencies in the set F. Now, the closure given by a plus of the set F of FD is, is the set of all functional dependency logically implied by F. That means we have these functional dependencies. Whatever more functional dependency we can logically generate using these functional dependencies. Those will be called as closure of F, right? So we can do it by using Armstrong's axioms. So what are there, those things? Hmm. First is reflexivity rule. What is that? If A is set of attribute and B is a subset of A, then A must identify B, right? That means A to B must hold as a functional dependency. Right? Augmentation rule. If A to B holds, then, if we augment, that means if we add another attribute or set of attributes C 
to A and B both side of the functional dependency then that new rule must hold and transitivity rule if A to B and B to C holds then A to C also hold so this transitivity rule it comes from you know, our algebra concept now come back to the functional dependency which was given by F now what are the rule we can infer so first we will see we can infer a x to n how because x to y we have a rule another is y to n so x to y y to n we can infer that x to n must hold so one rule is generative another you can see j dm to n and j dm to o two rules are there so we can union them by doing that we can create j m to n o okay so this is another rule we can infer another one you can see we have x to z right here x to z as a functional dependency now if we augment it with m that means what we will have x m z m okay now again we have z m to o another rule so in this way we can um, infer that x m to o x m to o is another rule uh, another functional dependency so this in this way we generate more functional dependency and you know these things are uh, becomes uh, more important when you will do normalization now types of functional dependency there are four kinds of functional dependency trivial functional dependency non-trivial functional dependency multi-valued functional dependency and transitive functional dependency what is trivial functional dependency x to y is trivial if y is a subset of x that means if we look at this example roll number name to name is a functional dependency but you can see this name is you know, part of the you know, determinant so who is determining so it is a trivial functional dependency the same thing we have this you know satisfied by reflexive rule non-trivial functional dependency if x to y is non-trivial if y is not a subset of x like role and name is determining address now address is not a part of this determinant so this is a non-trivial functional dependency multi-valued functional dependency in now multi-valued functional dependency what happens x to y is multi-valued functional dependency if y is a set of independent attribute now if you see look at this uh, example student id and uh, they are having the name and email address now it is said that a student may have two email address one is their personal email address another is given by the university now it is expected like you know it is going to be like this for each student id corresponding to a um, student name there will be two email ids two different email ids right so you can see these two things are you know going to repeat but these two things you know this email id field is going to be different so we can have student id to name one functional dependency name to email another functional dependency and student id to email another functional dependency now if you look into that this student id to email is selecting independent attribute right so it is a <coughs> multi-valued functional dependency transitive dependency if x to z holds x to z holds if x to y and y to z is there now if we have student id to name and name to date of birth then we can infer that student id to date of birth that is what satisfied by transitivity rule partial functional dependency if a set of attribute like say here a b is determining c but also a itself can determine c right 
AB together determining C and A itself can determine C. Then C is partially dependent on AB. Okay, now look at the same example. Student ID name together ident can identify email, but only student ID is enough to identify email. So email is only dependent on a partial part of the whole determinant, right? On a student ID. So we will say that email ID or this uh, this is partially dependent on the determinant. That means here we have a uh, this functional dependency is a partial functional dependency. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel to get more videos.